Hey everyone, welcome back and we're on a little bit of a field trip today. Uh, we are here at the offices of HTC Vive in San Francisco and I'm here with Steve from Make VR. And um, how are you doing? I'm doing really well. Cool. What is Make VR? Okay, in, in a nutshell, Make VR, we, we categorize it as an immersive content creation experience. Really what it is at its core level, it's a professional industry standard CAD engine that we have running with a very unique and intuitive two hand interface on the HTC Vive. So it's a, it's a VR wrapped professional CAD engine. That sounds, so what sets this apart from, if people are familiar with um, other 3D modeling tools in VR, things like Oculus Medium, um, what really sets this apart from uh, tools like that? Medium is a great tool. You know, what, what make VR is and what differentiates it is that it is a, a hard surfaced CAD engine. So you're not, you're not doing freeform sculpting, although you can do surface deformations. You're, you're doing, you have access to Boolean tools that have you know, highly developed Boolean tools, like 150 man years of development behind the tools. So you can grab objects, and interact with them, you can cut them, join them, slice them, sweep shapes through space, et cetera. So it's more targeted for generating solid models with you know, precision that you can send off to a 3D printer or export to other applications. That sounds great. Uh, do you mind giving me a quick tour of it? I do not mind at all. Be happy to. Great. OK, so what are we seeing here? So where you are is in one of our default worlds, sort of a little 3D printing world. It gives you some size and cubes, et cetera. Yeah, so you use the trigger on your Vive controllers, and you can pick up objects. You grab it with two hands. You can stretch it and scale it, just like you're doing right now. It's pretty, it's pretty intuitive. Um, and the grip buttons that are on the side of the controllers by your fingertips, if you push those, squeeze those, you can move space in and out. So you can pull yourself around the environment, although it's also room scale, so you can walk around. And if you pinch the grip buttons on both hands and pull your hands in and out away from each other, you can scale the environment up or down. And your right controller has a little size indicator that tells you how big you are in your environment, just to give you an idea. And the nice thing is with that environment scaling is you can go from working at a, a macro level, like planting buildings on a street, to the micro level where you pull yourselves in and start working on the hinges of the doors, for instance. I can't, so, uh, I can't set my height to my actual height of five and a half feet. You know, we do not have exact measurements <laughs> yet, but we will because you asked for it. So, so that's all you need to know about object manipulation and, uh, and viewpoint manipulation. Now, if you, on your left-hand controller, if you push the menu button, which is above the trackpad, that brings up your tool palette. Okay. And the tool palette is where you have access to all the CAD-based functionality of Make VR and also access to libraries of objects to bring in. So yeah, start with the, the subtract tool. So go ahead and just click that, pull the trigger, and you'll see the blue button on your right-hand controller now is represented with that, that cut icon. So now if you grab anything in the world, you pick something up, it flashes red. If you touch it to something else, that something else flashes green. Now, if you push the blue go button on your right hand, just push down on the trackpad, that'll perform the cut. It might be so hard to see. Sort that's, of a, that's a really thin object that you're slicing in. Take a look at some of the primitives behind you, or even the fire hider might, might work. Spin yeah, a little more to your right. Let's taking, start with some basics. Taking phone, yeah. phone case slices out of this robot here. There you go. Now, just so taking now, the now big... that's, that's showing exactly. Now you can see that. And, and the, uh, the cut assumes the, the, the material properties, color and texture yeah, of and the object in that here you and cut can, into it. I can look at all those tiny slices I took out of yes, this robot yeah, here. Yeah, that's all the phone slices you made. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so, so what else do we have here? So if you select any of the tools in the tool palette, okay. you can click the, the show me button down at the, down at the bottom, mm -hmm. and that will bring up a little video that basically shows you and you'll have audio telling you exactly how that tool functions. In this case, it's the add button. So whatever you're holding, when you touch it to something else and push the go button, it's going to make a copy of that. Yeah. And more than just make a copy of it, you're working with solid models. So everything here is going to be stitched completely watertight so you can send it off to a 3D printer without needing to do any modifications. 
So what's this slice tool do? Okay, slice tool functions exactly like cut, except it leaves the intersected piece there. So you won't see it disappear when you slice, but if you reach in and grab it, you can pull it out. All right, so I'm gonna try using this on this sort of rainbow primitive here. Okay, yep, so slice, and now just reach out and grab that piece, bingo. Nice. So it cuts the shape onto the other shape, but leaves the intersected piece there. Um, and what sort of, what sort of precision tools we have? I mean, obviously we have a lot of freeform modeling here and we have this nice ruler here that we can see as uh, we can measure the size of this robot here. Exactly. How big is that robot? Um, Again, you can scale the robot up or down, so you can make it as large or small as you wish. I think it is 24 inches. Well, that might be kind of large to print, but if, top you of this plinth. if you scale them down, you can print them. And we actually have printed out that robot. It's a, it's a pretty cool thing. We call it the, the black tick mech. Yeah, I don't know if I want to print this one. I've sort of ruined it. It'll work, though. It'll yeah. right out to a printer. Okay, so precision. So since Make VR, <coughs> excuse me, is a professional CAD engine, you have access, again, to, you know, a lot of the tools that are in there. We're going to be, you know, un exposing more tools as we move forward. But Make VR Pro, the version you're in right now, it gives you the ability to model with precision. So you have grids, you have jigs, you have objects snapping for positional alignment, you have porcupines for rotational alignment. So if you click on the, on the snap tool, for instance, it would be the one on, the, on your top row, the second from the right, all the way over, boom. Uh, yeah, wait, which it's one? the one with the magnet icon on it. There we go. So you click on that one. And uh, now, yeah, bring up a grid, you can click on that. And now you can grab that grid with both hands and scale it to make it large or smaller. You can turn off your tool palette if it's in your way, again, by clicking the menu button with your right thumb above the trackpad. Okay, so have this grid. Okay, so grab, uh, grab an object. Grab your cube. Cubes are always nice. Now you see that when you put your cube, when your cube touches the grid, it ghosts to it. And the ghosting shows you exactly where the cube is going to attach when you click the go button. So go ahead and click the go button. Oops. And now you can, no, it just, it goes to a, a wireframe. So now grab oh. the cube. Now grab it? Yeah. And now you can slide it around and it oh, tracks no. itself along, along, the, along the grid. Yeah, so and you can set the grid increments to US standard or metric. You can, you know, you can adjust the, the tracking increments to go from 1 32nd of an inch up to, a, up to an inch or more. And now I've grabbed this rotational widget Exactly. And now and then, I can and see. I can... That brings up the porcupine, and that gives you explicit 45 degree angle rotations if you keep your hand and the trackball within the within the. Oh, and if I sphere. move it outside. If you move it outside, then you have then fully I've... unconstrained rotation. Can I preset to different uh, snap increments, like 15 or maybe even Not five yet, degrees? Not yet, but we're going to. You will be able to do that. That will be a, a user defined measurement as well. So now you're seeing, what you're seeing there is basically 2D tracking where you're able to move that grid, move that cube, I'm sorry, anywhere around the grid. Now bring up your tool palette and grab one of the rulers right down on the bottom next to the, next to the grid icon down below, you see ruler, bring in one of those. Okay, now that, you can snap that to the grid, you can snap it to an object, and you see it'll ghost just the same, and when you click the go button, it'll attach itself to whatever object it's touching. It'll snap to that orientation. Oh, that's right, you gotta hit the go button? Yeah, the blue go button. There you go. So now you can drag that around the surface of that cube, and it, it, it sort of, uh, it obeys the, the volume of the cube. So as you spin it, if you, if you go off, you know, turn the corner and go around to another face of the cube, it'll rotate around where you, where you expect it to be. You have, the, you have the, uh, the rotational jig for that as well. Now what you can do is you can start building what we refer to as jigs. You could, you could snap rulers to grids and then snap objects to rulers so you can sort of simulate a drill press. So grab, grab something else, anything else. Grab, yeah, that. Grab that, this guy. Yeah, grab, now attach that to the ruler and then click the go button. Now you can see you can drag that along the ruler and it'll intersect the cube. You can push it through the cube so you can exactly line things up center to center. Yeah. You can line things up edge to edge. You can put them exactly where you want them to be and then perform the Boolean functions. So this way you can get 
precision alignment, positional and rotational, of any object in the scene in relationship to any other object, and, uh, and then perform whatever functions you wish to do. Let's do one of these. I'm going to flip this around. Oh, that is a tricky shape to observe in wireframe. OK. Now, how can I change the scale? Because I, if I move it along the ruler, it either wants to snap at the top Too of the ruler okay. or the bottom. So look at your tool palette. OK. And you'll see down at the bottom, you'll see increments. Uh, there we go. So Go right in. now you're working in millimeters I mean, in the metric system. So there you can change that so you know you can define how much you want it to move at any time. And to do my Boolean operation, I just go back here to just subtract. Just go back here, yeah, grab your subtract tool. And and then grab the pyramid again. It should it should go solid when you grab it so you can see where it is. For some reason it's there you go. Okay. It's, I think it's all the way inside the... Uh... Boom. Okay. Now I have this very precise... Uh, and you can send that right off to a 3D printer if you wish. For my pyramidal subtracted cube. Yeah, so you can use it as a small capacity shot glass or something. Yeah. It would be a very bulky shot glass. It would be. Maybe it's the start of like a speaker enclosure or something like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, How about, you want to try mirroring? Let's mirror something. So yes. go to the mirror tool down at the, the last one on the bottom row. Click that. And now what you'll do is you'll select whatever grid. You can bring in a new grid or use a grid you already have. Okay. We'll so use just, this grid. Yeah, so grab the grid just so it knows which plane it wants to, uh, wants to mirror across. And then gr touch whatever item you want to mirror. And then, but that's already in the center of the grid, so it might not show much. Grab another object. Grab like oh, that so yellow thing. Yeah, and then, you know, from right there, you can click mirror and uh, click the go button. And that's, see, it mirrored it across to the other side of the plane. Oh, but it doesn't remain constrained to the grid. No. Um, is there an undo? There is yes, an undo. Yes, there is an undo. Okay. You so can undo we... to your heart's content. And then, of course, I could just move the world around it. Yes, yeah, so you can. Here. Yeah, you or you know walk around it because you have the uh, the room scale tracking here with the vibe. Okay. Anything else we should be checking out? I think you know for the for the precision tools, you know that that pretty much cuts. It. I mean, you you've brought in a grid, you've snapped objects to a grid, you've used a ruler and slid things along the ruler, you've attached objects to other objects, and you've mirrored. So that you know that you know is a is a really good intro to what you can do with the precision tools. That's great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to show off MakeVR to me. And um, where can people learn more about it? All right, well, they can go to MakeVR.com. And MakeVR is currently available on Viveport, the, the initial release of MakeVR. We're going to be launching MakeVR Pro, the version you were playing with today, in the next week or so. That's great. So if you have a Vive, make sure to be on the lookout for that and uh, check out more about MakeVR in, in the coming weeks.